Hello, Ramy Jordan here from the Auto Diesel YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do a video as a follow-up to my Jordan box truck conversion 2015 video that everybody responded to so positively. Uh, today I'm going to do a special uh, walkthrough on the shower construction uh, per one of the viewers' requests. So here we go. So first off, uh, let me say a few things about the shower itself. Uh, this shower is fitting into a space that's about 26 by 26 with a shower basin that's 24 inches by 24 inches wide and 10 inches deep. As you can see here in a few minutes, the basin itself is key to uh, the way this shower is constructed. Uh, I searched uh, a long time to try to find something that would fit into this space and considered many options uh, of showers with wall constructions and valving and and ceilings and all sorts of things and really couldn't find anything to fit in this space properly so what I chose to do is a um, modification of and utilization of several components from different shower types of things uh, uh, starting with the basin that you'll see here in a minute uh, double shower curtains one of which is fully wrapped around the uh, interior of it that pro provides water protection uh, a ceiling acrylic up here to protect the ceiling and some special valving that I did with a PEX uh, plumbing unit, uh, plumbing parts. So here we go, we'll look at the basin first. So first off, this shower is about 70 inches tall. That's all the space that I have in this uh, cabin. Uh, I'm able to utilize, um, like I said, about 26 inches here um, with this basin. I've removed the the drain cover so you can see how it's constructed underneath um, this basin itself is actually a what's considered to be a musty mop basin it's something that's used by industrial supply organizations to clean mops and that sort of thing uh, but it fit perfectly it's 10 inches tall it's very sturdy it's molded fiberglass and I've secured it to this metal floor uh, with some specific tape that I'm going to show you here in just a minute. As you can see inside um, this drain, this drain is um, underneath this unit is a five inch hole that uh, this unit sits directly into and it comes with this seal here, this black seal and inside here is a three inch PVC that only extends down about four inches into the gray tank. It also comes with this nice uh, cover that fits very nice into that spot so the other thing I've done is to the interior of this is uh, actually is actually one um, uh, very clear heavy duty shower curtain that I've actually cut off at the bottom of about six inches so it's not quite as long as it originally was same thing for the external curtain and so all I've done is extended down into the inside of this basin uh, to catch all the water. So when we go inside, then what you have here is a, an overlapping situation with this shower curtain that just overlaps at the bottom with this side right here. So it overlaps about eight inches so that I don't have any water leakage. Up the top here I've got a um, an angled shower curtain fixture affixed to the wall over here obviously and secured in the middle with this specific strap. I've got examples of what that is. Um, the shower curtains themselves are tie wrapped all across to hold it in place. And then it's screwed into the wall here with these special rings and screws to hold it in position all the way around. Then with a this is a, a quarter inch, uh, about a quarter inch acrylic that I've screwed also to the to the ceiling to protect moisture. This unit here is actually a um, part of a unit that I bought from Lowe's. This is actually made by a company called Speakman, and originally it comes with a set of valves that are down here, uh, but the valves are too cumbersome to use and very heavy, and I just decided to eliminate it. Uh, again, once I found these little strap units, 
Uh, I found these at Lowe's. You can get these at Lowe's in the uh, pipe hanging department. Uh, and I left the shower head the way it was. So I've secured it back as far as I could to get room to be underneath it. So I've utilized about as much space as I could. Uh, from that point on, we have starting here and on down the rest of the way is PEX tubing system. This is a half inch uh, with a barbed end on it that fits perfectly into this Speakman um, unit and it comes down and as you can see I, I angle over and I'll show you where it goes from there. I've also installed a, a light on the other side of this shower curtain that I use a switch from the other side that you'll see in a minute. Uh, and then obviously to be able to have shampoo and toothpaste and soap and things I just screwed this to the wall and it's been very nice so there it is so I have plenty of room as I mentioned I'm five feet nine inches tall uh, I'm maybe a little wider than most of you but I have plenty of room because of the flexibility of this this curtain being the way it is um, on this side here uh, and I have plenty of room to move around and and be able to tilt this up and down to wherever I like it to be able to shower so so there you go this is my uh, shower inside a 26 by 26 inch space so let's look at the the valving system that I'm using so obviously when I exit I just pull this back and I'm out okay so as far as, as far as the valving I did here uh, this this is actually connected up to a, um, a hot water heater. So let's take a look at that. Inside this cabinet, I've installed an Ariston six-gallon water heater. Um, it fits pretty nice under this cabinet here. It's got a pop-off valve here on the top, and you can mount this in two ways. Uh, I have to mount it this way to where the exits are on the side. Um, hot water here cold water inlet down here I strapped this down plus I have some of this double sided tape that I'm going to show you on the very bottom of this thing so it's very sturdy it requires 110 electric as you see um, and I've installed a ball valve here on the entry point of this um, entry over here in the front and then the, here again the PEX tubing cold water inlet here plus cold water out goes to the cold water valve and then the hot water uh, goes out to the hot water valve it's been very secure I've never had any problems with leakage with the PEX system at all although I put that little napkin down there just to keep a detection on it just for sure all right as far as valving I chose to do it this way all the valving is here I just turn this on prior to taking a shower, get the temperature the way I like it. Uh, the top valve here happens to be the hot water, and the bottom one is the cold water. These are half inch valves. Here again, PEX system valves that you can uh, uh, plumb together. You can also find these little connectors here, these pipe hanger connectors here and here uh, to be able to secure your PEX piping. Uh, I like this a lot. Like I said, I've never had any problem with leakage in any of it. It's been very nice. The other thing I did is I installed this little switch here for the light inside the shower to turn it on and off whenever I want to take a shower. So, okay, so that's it. Um, as I said, I've, I've put this in about a 26 by 26 inch space been very effective hang towels and uh, nothing like having a hot and cold shower so there you go all right Randy Jordan here again I wanted to show you a little bit more about this PEX plumbing system I brought with me uh, the tools and all the part of the components you might need for um, uh, what you might want to do so I want to demonstrate this stuff to you and uh, uh, comment along the way so here we go First off, uh, what I have on this table here is the majority of things you might need to actually perform any work with some PEX. Um, as you can see, this is Apollo PEX um, 
This is Apollo PEX tubing, half inch. Um, this is the Apollo cutting tool, and this is actually the crimping tool. These are the crimps, the crimp testing. And I brought along with me some um, little pipe hanger suspension clamp type things you might want to buy. All this stuff was available at Lowe's. Uh, you can also find it at Home Depot. And um, you have to, in some cases, you might have to search a little bit to find all the pieces you need. But uh, uh, but look for the the pieces like this that are the ribbed, barbed type. These are the only, the only pieces I have left for these two 90 degree angles. So we're going to actually crimp, crimp them together and show you how this works. Um, so this is, as I said, the crimping tool. This device here is about $60 by itself. I think this cutting tool may have been 20 or 30. Um, these crimp uh, packages, they come 10 to a pack. They're probably about $5 each. Most of these component parts are around $5 each. Uh, but you should get this tool, uh, and you'll only use it a couple of times. You should get it free with this tool here. So look for, look for that when you, uh, if you go to buy one. So this is all a half inch system. So the first thing we'll do is cut off a piece of this tubing. This is a standard PVC cutting tool. Um, I would highly recommend you get something like this to cut this stuff. It actually cuts pretty easy. Uh, we'll cut off a little piece of it here. So in order to crimp, put your tube on there, put your crimp on there, whatever order you need. Put this crimp inside this tool here. Get it to where it's all in the direction, whatever you need. Crimp it down. You're all good to go there. If you want to get that off of there, so that I can cut it about right at the edge there. If you want to get it off for some reason, cut it up as close as you can. To that barb stick this tool in here like that crimp it down until it clicks and snaps like that turn it over start it again but it'll separate you can see it separate there you don't have to cut it all the way through again just separate it and then you should be able to get it off of there again okay and as I mentioned um, these work nice for mounting something through a wall uh, so that you would adhere this to the to where you're well, the wall you're coming through and actually this one then would be something you adhere it to a continuing space continuing direction like I did on my shower um, this tool here as I mentioned its purpose is to measure whether or not you did the crimp properly or not by doing something like that you'll see that in the instructions but once you get the hang of it, then you really don't need to worry about it anymore uh, in terms of whether you're doing it properly or not. All right, so there you go. That's the, the PEC system. I've been real pleased with it. It's a little bit expensive, but it does the job right. So you might want to consider it uh, in your work uh, if you'd like to. So this is the tape that I use to adhere the basin to the metal plate in the bottom of my truck. This is a butyl tape um, by, named Eternabond. It's by a company called Micro Sealant Technology. It's a double stick, two inch by 50 foot roll of butyl tape. This stuff works really great. Now this is about a uh, uh, third of a roll. Uh, it's a bit expensive. I bought it through PPL. Um, which is an RV store. It's about forty dollars a roll, so I end up using about three rolls or two and a half rolls of this uh, during the course of my build. So anyway, I'd recommend this stuff. It's very uh, sticky and it'll handle heavy things or light things both. So I got love that one and the 3M90 are the best uh, products that I found available to do for this sort of thing. Send me any comments you have at r2jordan at comcast.net. Thank you very much.